Question eight is unashamedly testing your knowledge of probability formulas. If you know your probability formulas and you know what words like independent and complement mean, you should have no worries. This first section, probability of A intersection B. Well, it should jump out at you that we can use the conditional probability formula. Just the probability of A given B is the probability of the intersection over the probability of B, provided B doesn't equal this probability of B doesn't equal zero. Well, we can substitute and solve, but first we'll rearrange to get the probability of A intersection B as the subject of our equation. Then we have the probability of B is one third times the probability of A given B is three quarters, and that is one quarter. Okay, calculate the probability of A prime intersection B. For this one, you really just draw like a half Carnot map. Or if you understand your Venn diagrams, you can do it that way too. But we'll do the half Carnot map. That's not a technical term. So you got your um, A, A prime, B. B prime. Well, the probability of A intersection B is one quarter. A intersection B, one quarter. And we know the probability of B is one third. And we know that this quantity here, which is A intersection A prime intersection B, has to make, has to add to a quarter to give a third. So one quarter plus something gives one third. So the probability of A prime intersection B is one third minus a quarter, which is four twelfths minus three twelfths, which is one twelfth. There we are. Now part C, if events A and B are independent, calculate the probability of A union B. So your only choice here is the addition rule of probability, which is the probability of A union B, the probability of A plus the probability of B, subtract off that intersection. Rightio, what quantities do we have in this formula? Well, probability of A intersection B we worked out up here is one quarter, probability of B is one third. Ooh, probability of A, what's that about? Couple ways to think about this. So remember, if events are independent, the independent events, their intersection is the product of each individual probability, right? So that says that a quarter equals a third times the probability of A. And then if you take a quarter and divide it by a third and figure that out, you get three quarters. Another way to think about it without having to use that formula is to remember that if you have a conditional statement and A and B are independent, well, independent means that they don't have any bearing on whether the other happens. A doesn't care what B thinks. It's not conditional on B. It does its own thing. So because it's independent of B, then for independent events, the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A. And no surprises, you get that three quarters there as well. So if you use the formula or used reasoning, either way, you should get that three quarters. Let's make the denominators the same. So you get 9 twelfths plus 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths, which equals 10 twelfths, which simplifies to 5 sixths. And that's your answer there.